hi guys welcome back to the channel my name is lily as we already know and for today's video we're going to be creating a tile table i'm sure you've seen these a lot on tiktok they kind of went viral and i really wanted to do my own um it looked really easy on tiktok but it's not as easy as it looks so definitely prepare yourself to get messy to get a little frustrated because it's tile and it's very time consuming so it has to be really particular mine is a little bit crooked in some places but it's okay again it's a diy and that's kind of what's special about it yeah let's get right into it first and foremost head to your nearest lowe's or home depot to get all the necessary supplies make sure you do your research this is quite a project and you want to make sure you have a list of all the supplies that you'll need along with the tools and any tips that may help you to get this project done as easy as possible. The one that I got is technically not plywood, but it's called something else. It's a lot cheaper. Um, I will find it for you and put it in the description. Oh, but this one, oh, I think it's this one actually, maybe. But yeah, something around this price range is what you want to get for sure. And we're back. I just wanted to show you guys all of the materials that I picked up at, at Lowe's and at Home Depot because neither or had all of the items. So I just kind of went to both. So like I said, I got a small table for free and it's technically not wood according to geo it's cardboard it's one of those really flimsy ikea walmart tables so we'll see how it goes because obviously it's not solid wood and i'm gonna drill into it so we'll see how that goes but this is the table that we got it's a great size i think and then we got this piece of plywood at Lowe's and we had them cut them into the correct measurements. Make sure that you tell them to cut on the outside of the measurement because apparently that matters. Otherwise, it adds about an eighth of extra um, and then you'll get your measurements wrong. So definitely get that. These are the tiles that I got. You'll need your tile adhesive and I got unsanded white grout, um, some gloves, and this is to kind of clean the grout after. Um, we have our little, what is that thing called? I think it's called a float, something like that. I don't know, but we used it for the cement table, so now we're gonna use it for this. And then you also need um, these little ones with the ridges for that, and of course, a bucket for the grout. So those are all the materials that I got, and I'm gonna get to work right away. We ended up nailing the plywood onto the table versus drilling. Since it wasn't real wood and only cardboard, we felt that this was the most secure way to get it all pieced together. Hi guys, we've officially nailed all the sides all around except for the bottom because we don't want to add that extra layer at the bottom and then the top because I thought it was kind of unnecessary but I actually kind of wish that I did now just because it's not like perfectly blushed but I think it's still going to be okay because it's going to be covered with the tile on top and the grout so you're not going to be able to see that and yeah this is what it looks like so far we've built a box yay <laughs> Okay guys, this is how the tiles turned out and they look so cute. They're glossy white, just what I needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these over so that I can put them on. Okay, I'm gonna start adding the tile adhesive and I've never done this before, just like I've never done anything in my DIY videos. So I'm gonna figure it out as I go, but I'm using um, this baby over here and I watched a video and they just basically basically put a really thin layer of it and then i read the instructions on this one and it says to just put um a thin layer with a trowel and then um with the flat side and then add another layer with a notched side so that's what we're going to be doing just because i want to follow what's on this particular container because it may be different from the one that the other person in the video had so i want to make sure that i'm following it as best as i can
Okay guys, after a lot of consideration, I decided to cut the grids into one like two by two pieces so that I could actually have more control of the spacing because it was coming off the edges everywhere. It wasn't fitting properly. So at least this way, I have a little bit more control of the spacing. The only bad part is that it's not gonna be as perfect as possible as straight but at least it's as flushed as possible. And I think that that's better because um, nobody's really gonna be staring at it and like seeing the crookedness unless you have a friend that has major OCD, which is highly possible. But for the meantime, I think that it looks really good and that's the front. So yeah, that's where we're at for now. You wanna follow the instructions on your grout package. I believe for mine, it was a two to one consistency, meaning two cups of grout to one cup of water. As you can see, the color of my white grout is more of an almond color, which is exactly what I wanted to add more depth. That slight off-white is going to make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, in my opinion, than all bright white. And what you want to do when you lay it over is you want to put it with a float um, at a diagonal, and you want to make sure that all those little cracks are fully full, but they're also smooth. Any ridges or any texture that's in the grout is gonna stay that way. So I highly recommend that you put on those gloves and you kind of soften up all of those edges and just smooth it all out because it's gonna save you a ton of time and a ton of headaches. Okay, at this point, you're almost done. Now using a fiber towel or a sponge, which I highly recommend you use a sponge, you want to polish out any of the excess grout in a circular motion to get rid of all the excess without going into the ridges and taking out that sort of bonding that it needs. Okay, so some of the difficulties that I definitely had with this table is one, I couldn't find the two by two white ceramic tiles. If you look on OfferUp maybe, or if you have a local tile table, you might get a little bit luckier with finding this particular tile. But for me, I had to go to Lowe's and I found the marble version of it. So I had to spray paint it white and I just used a both primer spray paint glossy white um, that Lowe's recommended to me to paint it. But um, while we were cleaning off the adhesive and the grout to make it really clean, it actually kind of scraped the paint a little bit. So in some of the corners of the tile, you could see a little bit of the gray peeking out from the marble original design. So that's definitely one of the things that I would recommend you are a little bit more careful with or if you could find that tile it would be super super helpful another thing is if you're cutting your tile you're going to notice that it comes with the grid i would say cut closer to the tile so that that grid the little spikes don't come out and i'll show you guys right now what i mean by that it, the grout can come sometimes lower than those little pieces so they'll come poking out um, so that's definitely one of the things and another one is when you're grouting it or when no sorry when you're adding the adhesive make sure that it's actually a pretty thin layer of adhesive not too much because if you put too much your tile is going to come out wobbly and you're going to have inconsistency um, and some of them are going to be deeper and some of them are going to come out a little bit more so just um, the depths of your tile will be off so you want to make sure that you do it all the same if you can um what else of course you want to keep them as straight as possible and lastly is get the right primer or yeah like the right po proxy poxy to put on top of it to keep it shiny i used the one from the cement table which was only for cement wood and it was not for tile so it definitely left it a little bit thicker and by that time we were all so exhausted and all the dust from taking off the grout and the adhesive was on top of the table so i feel like that added that extra texture that was definitely unnecessary but this is the final result of our little tile table our little tile coffee table um and i'll give you guys the total amount that it cost me to create this it was over a couple of days i didn't have like a full two day thing to do it so it definitely took me a little bit longer but I'm pretty happy with the result and I hope you guys like it and I put it in my living room for setting purposes so you guys could kind of see it in action. So let me show you.